Hi, welcome to this short video on basic operations and pump setup for the Mark III Watson Edition pump. You talked, we listened. Here are the main features of the Mark III Watson Edition. It's now 30% lighter and 20% smaller. The first step is to find a nice, safe and open pump site located near a water source. In order to operate the Mark III Watson Edition pump, the required tools are tool kit, water handling accessories, hand primer, suction hose, discharge hoses, fuel tank, strangler, and recommended PPE. Water Axe suggests a fuel mixture of 50 to 1 using synthetic oil. Note that the fuel consumption will change based on the elevation, the barometric pressure, and throttle position. Now that you have everything you need, you're ready to set up the pump. Using the spark plug wrench rod to push in the ball bearings in the fuel line quick connect while squeezing the primer bulb will allow the air to be purged from the fuel line. Using objects like twigs or pencils can cause pieces to break and jam the quick connect ball valve. Firmly press fuel line connection onto the pump fuel connection and twist to lock in place. Check to see if the foot valve is working correctly by pressing on the spring-loaded valve located at the bottom. Ensure that the foot valve is firmly attached to the suction hose. It should be hand tight. Speed up pump and priming by submerging the suction hose in the water before attaching the pump intake. Use one hand to keep the suction hose level and straight to take pressure off the threads. Use the other hand to attach the end of the suction hose to the pump intake. Hand tighten as much as possible. Finish tightening with the hose wrench to prevent any air leaks. Cross threading can damage the connection and create air leaks that lead to air locks and potential pump end seizure. Water Axe recommends the use of a thread protector to protect the pump end threads against any damage. Allowing at least 20 centimeters, eight inches, of water above the foot valve will stop any air from being sucked into the pump end. Suspend the foot valve off the bottom if sand, gravel, mud, or other material could be drawn into the pump. You can place it on a rock, in a submerged toolbox, but make sure to keep tools together in a safe place to prevent loss. You can also tie it to a stake or shovel, place it on spruce or pine bows, or tie it to a float. Priming the pump end can be done by either agitating the foot valve or by using a hand primer. Keep priming until either there's water coming out of the discharge or out of the spout on the hand primer. Attach the discharge hose. Once again, it is important to have an airtight connection. Now that your pump is set, it's time to fire it up. Hearing protection is recommended when operating the Mark III Watson Edition pump. Set the throttle to the start position. Set the choke to the start position. If the engine fires but does not continue running, Turn the choke to the off position. Find a comfortable, firm grip on the pull start handle, but don't wrap it around your hand. Placing your other hand on the handle and your foot on the frame foothold will provide stability while pull starting. The LED light will stop flashing and change to a solid green once the pump is warmed up sufficiently and is ready to be throttled up. Here are some examples of pump layouts commonly used in the field. A Y can be used with a single pump to provide water to discharge to two discharge hoses. Running parallel hose lays provides reliability, more volume, and allows the use of two water sources simultaneously. Parallel pumps connecting to a single hose line are less efficient because of increased friction loss. A tandem setup can be introduced to overcome elevation and distance when effective working pressure cannot be achieved. In this case, use a tandem adapter to prolong the life of the engine, let the pump idle for at least two minutes before shutting it down. Avoid contact with the muffler after operating the pump to avoid any burns and injuries. Drain the pump end after use. After pumping salty or brackish water, it is also important to flush the pump end with fresh water. Drain the fuel line back into the fuel tank to avoid leaks during transport. Tighten the cap on the fuel tank to avoid spills during transport. Fasten protective caps on the discharge and intake ports. Protect the fuel line connection with a fuel line connection cap. If the pump won't start or is running rough, follow the following basic troubleshooting steps. Ensure that the fuel line is clear of air bubbles or contamination. Make sure that there is a spark. When checking the spark, make note of the color of the spark plug. If the air fuel mixture is too lean, the spark plug is white. And if it's too rich, the spark plug is black. 
Keeping a clean air filter will ensure good flow of oxygen into the carburetor. Remove the pump end and inspect to ensure there's no blockage. When reattaching the pump end, use only finger pressure when securing the clamp. If the recoil assembly becomes inoperable, remove the recoil starter to expose a manual start pulley. Next, it is important to rotate the fan shield and replace the three bolts to hold the fan shield and fan cowl in place. Restore pump site to the way you found it. Collect and remove garbage and litter before leaving the site.